Are you trying to decide on which 4070 Ti to buy? Check out this clip from our recent stream. Yes, so this is the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. Um, this uh, is uh, it installed on my PC. I've got this sweet, sweet blue and red Aura Sync uh, theme that I created with Aura Creator to match the blue and red on the bottom of the card. And we got these really nice blue and black cables from Cable Mod as well uh, that really just tie the whole thing together. Love it. Um, so this strict, we've talked about the 4090 and the 4080 on the stream already. Mm -hmm. um, and those are uh, those were kind of the exact same size and build. The 4070 Ti is actually a little bit different of a build. So um, it's using the same Ada Lovelace architecture as the 4080 and the 4090, obviously. It's got the fourth gen Tensor cores, the third gen RT cores. So you're going to get better ray tracing performance, better DLSS and all that. It's got DLSS 3, which we will be looking at in a little bit. Unlike the other cards, though, this has a base TGP of only 285 watts, which is a lot less than like the 450 watts that we saw on the 4090. Um, so uh, I, I think you have a clip of me showing off this versus my tough 4090. So I fortunately don't have a Strix 4090 here. Um, and I couldn't show this off on stream because it's installed in my PC. But there's the card. That's it the 4070 awesome. Ti. Yep. This is the 4070 Ti, and I'm going to be comparing it to my tough 4090. Uh, the Strix card is a little bit um, slimmer and a little bit shorter. So it's still using the same die cast shroud um, frame and back plate, but it's uh, 336 millimeters long and it's 3.15 slots versus the 3.5 slots on the Strix 4080 and 4090. And I think the tough, the tough 4090 that I'm about to show off is a little bit uh, thicker. It's got all of the features that you've come to expect from a Strix card. So it's got those... Uh, Fan connect headers that I just showed off. It's got a 16-pin power connector and a dual BIOS switch. Uh, so you can switch between performance mode and a slightly quieter mode if you're into silence. It's got that huge vent on the back with that dope-looking ROG logo. I'm, like, kind of weirdly obsessed with that vent. It's so <laughs> cool looking. And I like that, like, you know, a few years ago, a lot of GPU manufacturers didn't put a lot of uh, design effort into the back of the card, Right. But now these back plates look. They don't so leave anything cool. untouched now. Yeah, look at that. Size I know, difference. and that's cool because the back plate is what you see. Like that's the part I want to look cool. Yeah, so it's it's it is a little bit smaller than the forty ninety, which is nice, and it it's kind of hard to show off in a video. But like if you're holding them in your hands, it actually does feel significantly smaller. Um, but again, it's got all of those same features that you'd hope for. It's got the Aura Sync RGB on the little Republic of Gamers logo here and on the edge of the card. Um, it does come with a bundled graphics card holder, which I don't think you can see in the video. You can see it just a little bit right down here. It's holding up my card. It's got a little ROG logo. It's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got our zero dB technology. So when you're not running games, those fans aren't going to spin at all. It's going to be super quiet. Um, and, uh, yeah, reliable power delivery. There is a tough version of this that is 3.25 slots. Our tough cards are a little bit thicker uh, than the Strix cards. Um, but, yeah, it is it is a beauty. And I'll tell you, the thing about the Strix cards that I love, and I I... I kind of want to show this off but it might be a little bit janky as i tilt my camera here check out this case that i'm using okay so i've got um two intake fans in the front and then two intake fans in the bottom there actually and then actually i drilled a hole up here in the top of the case for intake as well so when my cpu was air cooled not that long ago i would have fresh air coming in from the top and going through to the air cooler and these bottom fans actually had more of an effect on gpu temperatures as you'd expect than they did cpu temperatures so uh, you know, I can hook them up to my motherboard and have them fluctuate with my CPU temperatures, but what would really be useful is for those bottom fans to ramp up when the GPU ramps up. And that is what those fan connector, uh, fan connect headers on the back of the Strix GPUs are so awesome for, because then you can fire up GPU tweak and, and match the, those external fans to your GPU usage. The tough Pretty cards sick. do not have this. A lot of other manufacturers do not have this. That is really, really cool, especially if you have kind of a unique case design and, and certain fans are pointing toward the GPU. That's like a really useful feature. I don't have it hooked up right now because this card is only in my machine temporarily and I didn't want to reroute all my cables. But back when I had a Strix card, it was awesome um, as my daily driver. Uh, again, because this is only 285 watts, you might um, be able to use the existing power supply that you have. But if you need uh, an upgraded power supply for this, um, I would definitely look at our ROG Thor 850 watt Platinum 2 
um, as well as our ROG Strix 850 watt Gold Edition Aura, which is I'm actually what I'm using. Um, I'm using the new Gold Edition Aura, and uh, we also have the ROG Loki coming out if you're doing a small form factor build. And actually, because this card is a bit smaller, you might be able to fit it into some mini ITX cases. Uh, I, th and, I think so. Just looking at it, sweet, sweet machine. <laughs> and I do want to just like stress like how much smaller the Loki is. It's actually uh, you look at a picture of the Loki and it doesn't necessarily look smaller, but once you see it in person, you're like, oh my goodness, it's adorable. It's actually it is, the yeah. little brother to the Thor. And it yeah, and it's perfect for a small form factor build. Um, yeah, and and it's going to be a great pairing with this particular card too. Yeah. So that's that's the Strix card in a nutshell. I I don't know. Maybe I'm spoiled. But after I bought a, my first Strix card was, I think, a 970 back in the day. And after, after using a card that has, like, cooling that good and that many features, it's really hard to go back to anything else. Um, so I have been just kind of a fanboy of Strix cards ever since uh, because they just are the best. Yeah, this is the first <laughs> time I've ever, like, sat here staring at a, the 40 series of the Strix uh, turned on and i i do i initially thought i was going to miss that like horizontal led strip a little bit more than i do oh, but I, actually this the the logo it's really sharp with the strip it works really well yeah and i think it's hard so i mean we've said this before right pictures do not do this card justice and the video does it a little bit more justice but it still does not do this card justice the the light up logo right here the republic of gamers logo looks really really cool in person and definitely feels like there's more rgb on the card than just mm -hmm. the edge which i think pictures sometimes it's a little bit tough to tell and man that uh the shroud with the big rog logo it's got this really nice like metallic sheen to it and it looks so good in person that is the strix card i highly highly recommend checking it out if you are looking for a new 40 series card but i also want to take a look at the actual performance of this 4070 ti because i gotta tell you I was kind of shocked and blown away by how this card performs. So uh, let's take a look. I'm just going to do a quick Time Spy Extreme run just to kind of show the kind of average overall performance. For, uh, this is not overclocked, but this is the OC edition of the card. Um, so it is overclocked by, I think, like 150 megahertz on the GPU core compared okay. to... Um, the stock 4070 Ti performance. We are going to overclock it a little bit further today because there is still a little bit of overclocking headroom, but um, definitely, I definitely recommend getting the OC edition of these cards if you want a little bit of extra performance without having to do any work at all. <laughs> um, but I believe that we should have regular non-OC editions available as well, depending on your region and whatnot. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, this is our score. My score is probably a little bit lower than I was testing this week because I'm doing some video capture and stuff like that. Um, this is uh, just over 10,000. I was actually getting closer to 11,000, 10,994 when I tested it on kind of a clean system with nothing else running. That is crazy for a 70 tier card because that is uh, the same level as a 3090 Ti. Hmm. So... With this card, you're getting the performance of around a 3090 Ti, which is a 450 watt card. This is 285 watts, so way less power consumption with the same performance Huge. and extra features like DLSS3. The power to the performance too which is the amount of energy you use to get the oh. performance is also just a great thing to know, especially because we're I mean here in the U.S electrical prices are going up so you want to yep. conserve as much energy as you can with your G and gpu even if you're not concerned about energy prices so like i have solar panels as i've mentioned before <laughs> um but it's not just about the the power bill either because that power consumption also affects heat output True. and noise output and i'm a silence freak right again one of the reasons that i always buy strix cards and the tough cards can do this too is that they have those really big heat sinks right uh usually much bigger than a lot of the other um i'll just say other brands well even um, even just the other lower end versions of the cards yeah and with those big heat sinks you don't have to spin the fans as much and because again it's a triple fan card too you don't have to spin the fans at high, as high of an rpm which gives you a lot less noise and if mm -hmm. you were running the same performance on a card that was 450 watts like the 3090 ti um, you might have to work a little bit harder to cool that because that's a lot more wattage going through the card and so lower power consumption is a huge draw for me as someone who wants my computer to be as quiet as possible and like we talked about earlier with um 
Small form factor builds. Huge uh, consideration for small form factor builds too because they're in such an enclosed space and you don't have as much airflow. Um, you've got that DLSS3, which is really, really worth having. And again, even if you don't use DLSS or DLSS3 uh, frame generation now, buying a card that has all of those features as opposed to like a last gen card is going to kind of set you up for the future, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're buying this card for the long haul, you need those features because five, six, seven years from now, like it might not be a 4K 200 hertz card. But you turn on DLSS and all of a sudden you can still hit those high frame rates with it. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of longevity is something that really excites me in terms of uh, new features like DLSS. And that's what would really draw me toward a 40 series versus a 30 series or earlier card. The 30 series is still awesome and I'm still rocking one on the machine behind me. But man, if I were buying a card today, this 4070 Ti would be a contender. Thanks for watching our tour of the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. To see more of our hands-on coverage, check out the full stream in the description below. And as always, subscribe to us here on YouTube and check out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash ASUS ROG.